ladies and gentlemen, main events in association with Golden Boy Promotions, Bally's Atlantic City, and Caesars Atlantic City are proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Nemiroff, sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., board members Dennis McDonough and Stephen Katz. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest will be Guido Cavallari, Julie Letterman, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Earl Brown. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, let's get her! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, official weight, 140 pounds, a veteran of 55 professional bouts, 47 victories, including 19 knockouts, with six defeats, two bouts even, and one no contest. Here is the challenger, the fighting pride of San Antonio, Texas, the former super featherweight world champion and former IBA lightweight champion of the world, Jesse James Leha. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue, official weight, 140 pounds, professional record, 38 victories, including 29 knockouts, with six defeats. From Jersey City, New Jersey, the ultimate blood and guts warrior, the two-time world champion, the reigning, defending, WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Arturo Thunder. Jane Satoro, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Anything from here down will be considered a low blow. Anything from here down will be considered a low blow. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Gary says he wants to win the right way tonight to hit and not get hurt against Aleja. We'll believe it when we see it. We believe the warrior tattoo on Arturo Gatti's tummy is a new one. Leha is markedly unmarked <laughs> in this era for prize fighters. <laughs> Tattooless as he steps into the ring. Arturo Gatti at his best in the third ward fight, in the brief two round knockout of Leonard Doreen in his last fight, throws more than 40 jabs per round, meaning he's working off a boxing base. And he's working with the jab here early, and Leha is trying to match him jab for jab. Crowd begins to chant immediately. For the love of their lives. <laughs> That's what they came here to see, Jim. Arturo Thunder got it. And if they want to see him in one of his legendary wars, they've got a chance tonight. We don't guarantee anything anymore. The Doreen fight looked like a can't-miss fight of the year candidate, and it was over in a round and a half. Because Gaddy befuddled Doreen with his boxing, and he's a bigger man. There, he rocks Leha with an uppercut that knocked James back a step or two. Gaddy's great.
greater range is already visible. So Leha has to swing wide, has to step in, has to find ways to shorten the distance in order to land. Well, he's a shorter fighter, so we expect that he'd have to go in closer to land a punch. Arturo sticking his jab in Leha's face. Left hook for James Leha. It's been a relatively tactical round one. Left-hand body shot for Leha. They fought virtually the entire round at the center of the ring. James was able to get to Bojado in the middle rounds with a steady dose of overhand rights. He's hoping the same punch can work here. Gaddy's been susceptible to right hands from some opponents in the past. Good, solid jab for Gaddy as Leha was walking in. And Leha has landed one of those overhand rights already tonight. It's just a matter of time for him to see how long can he touch David Banner before he makes him change into the incredible hook. There's the right hand by Leha. You see he throws it in an overhand arc. Good uppercut by Gaddy. Once again, stuffs Leha backward. Both men had their moments in round one. And now. You know you're trying to get the right hand in. Yeah. So just step around to your right. Keep going to your right. The uppercuts are working beautiful, baby. Very good. Nice deep breath. Now, sometimes I want you to do this. Faint the jab, then jab. Because what he's doing, he's trying to jab when you jab. So faint the jab sometimes, then when he commits, you jab. And step around to your right. Walk away from the right hand. OK? Very good. Keep telling him with the uppercuts, baby. Very good. The jab and the lock, you got to edge your face because you see he's trying to come over the top okay, okay. with the right hand. Okay. And he's leading off with the uppercut, okay? okay. So listen, watch your face. When you see the uppercut coming, just turn and shoot yours. Okay. Okay? Because okay. okay. it's right there. All right? Well, that's good. Hey, everything else looks good, though, okay? All right. All right. That was a good round, all right? We're not going to worry about that first round, okay? okay. Now we got to pick it up a little bit. Pick it up a little bit for me, all right? If Leha is going to steal Thunder's thunder, he's going to have to get closer. Fight him on the inside. And just to show you how pronounced has been Gaddy's move toward more boxing under Buddy McGirt, in round one he threw 54 jabs. Landed 14 of them. So Gaddy's become a jab machine, Roy. A beautiful jab machine. And I just love to see him when he boxes like this. Boxing like this, he, can, he has a chance of beating anybody. The only problem that he has is he has to make sure that he doesn't let himself get tricked into a war or make him change into the incredible hook again because this is the best boxing I've seen from Gaddy. Buddy McGirt's first fight with Arturo Gaddy was Gaddy against Tehran Millette in 2002. That was in the small room at Madison Square Garden where Gaddy really affected the beginnings of his comeback. He had been blown out by Oscar De La Hoya, outgunned and outsized in a previous fight. He came back and knocked out Millette. And that started things under McGirt. McGirt Got a lot of attention for accurately predicting to the New York writers that Gaddy would drop the left with the right hand in the fourth round, and he did it. Hard right hand by Leha there. And you heard both corners talking between rounds about that's what Jesse wants to do, get in that overhand right. And he lands it again. Good left by Jack Gaddy as Leha was stepping in one more time to try to throw the right. The one good thing for Gotti is I'm sure he's above 150 pounds right now. And that would enable him to take those punches a little bit better because he's definitely the bigger fighter here. Double jab by Gaddy. Leha dodged the right hand. Once again, they jab at the same time, and Arturo's able to stick his right on the Leha's chin. <laughs> Buddy McGirt instantly spotted that Leha wants to jab when Gaddy jabs, told him faint the jab, make him throw his, then step around it. <laughs> Marco Antonio Barrera, the great featherweight. Good right hand by Gaddy. That was made, cracked. Has made a similar transition as Gaddy, going from a brawler uh, to a boxer, and made it successful. <laughs>
crowd very quiet. Uh, didn't come here for a sparring session. And the good thing to see is that to show you that Gotti, I mean that uh, Leha is not here to lay down. He just took a beautiful right hand from Gotti early in the round that should have laid the normal for the pounder down. Leha is given as good as he gets here in this second round. He's found chances to land both his right hand and his left hook. Just as Gatti has landed some sharp right hands in addition to his jab. Good fight. But it's a boxing match, not a brawl. Good yeah. body time. Cut. You set him up beautiful, baby. Nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. Relax, very good. Now let's go with the double jabs now. Double jab. Let's start putting some more body shots together. Don't have to be hard, just fast shots, okay? Now keep stepping to your right because he's throwing that right hand. Okay, so double jab, just step around. Okay, very good, baby, beautiful. Beautiful, baby. Okay, because it's going to be that for you. He don't, he ain't going to see it coming. All right. You understand? Now look, let's get a little closer and start trying to work his body a little bit now, okay? Can we do that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Keep moving that hand. Keep moving that hand. Okay? Yeah. He throw that right hand. You see it, you go on the outside. He see got it working off of this beautiful jab and came with a beautiful right hand off the jab as he tricked uh, Leha and Alina over to the left, trying to slip the jab. That came all from the work of the jab. You know, the image of Gaddy as a blood and guts warrior will never diminish. But in fact, he hasn't had a serious problem in bleeding for more than four years. Since the Joe Hutchinson fight in Montreal back in the year 2000. Power punches through the first two rounds, Leha has landed more. And that's because Gaddy has been so punch, almost punch, totally focused back on up, the jab. Back up, back up, back up. He's landed 34 jabs in the first two rounds. I wonder how long Gaddy's fans will stay in love with Arturo Gaddy, the pure boxer. Probably as long as he keeps winning, it's okay. And as long as he pulls knockouts out the head at the end of the night, they're happy. They don't care how he got there. Gaddy jabbing and ducking and slipping punches. Boxing beautifully into the third. Left hook to the body. Always one of Arturo's best punches. Straight right hand, quick and flush. That was a beautiful counter, something that you didn't see from him much when he was a warrior. There's the same counter right hand. Sharp. And there's a solid right hand from Leha. And Leha is a true veteran of the game, even at 38 years old. No matter how skilled you become as a boxer, if you're a warrior like Arturo Gatti and you get clocked with a hard right hand like he did from Leha about 45 seconds ago, your first instinct is to want to fire back. So he's having to control that. Showing a lot of discipline. Really is. I wish he'd show a little less <laughs> <laughs> It's for him, Larry, not for us. <laughs> oh, he almost got a chance to knock Leha into the cheap seats with a counter right hand, but just missed over the top. But Arturo has been so accurate in this third round that Leha has had few chances. He's been on the defensive against a guy who is putting his punches together pretty well. The yeah, jab is starting to bother Leha now. I find myself asking the question of myself, does Leha want to take the risks to get to Gaddy? Is he willing to take it in order to get Gaddy into the rolling mode that could serve him best? Well, he did get in one solid right hand there, but not many chances in the third round, and it begins to look as though he's going to have to take some risks okay, listen, and go inside against right that hand. terrific now, jab Gaddy's throw. Right hand to the body. He throws it right hand Next to the Wednesday at 10 p.m., tune in to Inside the NFL Super Bowl Special on the Patriots and Eagles. Join Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter for picks and analysis from Jacksonville, Florida, the site of Super Bowl 39. Keep doubling the jab. Little faints double, faints double. All right, that double is messing him up, okay? 
Put people, every now and then, touch them downstairs, baby. Very good. You put it on the clinic. Okay? Put it behind the jab, okay? okay. Look, move, move around a little bit this far. Move around a little okay. bit. Use your face, move around. When, when you get close to them, bam, 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 and step around. Okay? That's how we got to win the round. round. Listen to me. At this move rate, around. the cut man, Joe <laughs> Souza, could go take a seat <laughs> in the bleachers. In the first round, Gaddy threw 54 jabs. In the third round, Gaddy threw 58 jabs. He has become a paint job operator. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> Objection! Three rounds to nothing, 30 to 27, Arturo Thunder Gaddy. Jim, I gotta tell you something. I always talk about ring generalship. When you keep a guy at the perfect distance, in other words, just far enough away so he can't hit you, like Arturo Gaddy is keeping Jesse James Leia, that's great ring generalship. He keeps him just far enough to hit him with the jab and then come across with the right hand. You know, throughout much of his career, Arturo Gatti had a lot of high contact fights without many knockouts. If he keeps jabbing like this, Roy, he might see his knockout percentage go way up. He will. And the thing I think he's realized at this point in the fight is that Leha really can't hurt him. So does that make a target practice from here on in? No, it won't make him change into the incredible hook so fast because the shots are not really upsetting him that much. He can box and stay disciplined that way. He is a beautiful specimen when he boxes. I'm going to see him fight like this all his, all his career. Well, early in his career, this was the way he fought. He outdueled Tracy Harris Patterson, who was a brilliant boxer uh, over the course of 12 terrific rounds. And, and a lot of people didn't notice because that came at the same time as his all-out wars with Wilson Rodriguez and a couple of other fighters, that Arturo was really capable of doing that. And, and in the eyes of many, maybe he forgot it, too. Well, one, one thing you know, Jim, that when he starts fighting elite fighters, if he gets past this fight, he always can reach down and reach back for the warrior in him. That will never leave him. Once he realized how much the fans liked it, I think it turned him on even more. But you, you still have to think that one punch here could change matters with a cut or uh, some other happenstance. Gaddy lands a right uppercut and a solid left hook, backing Leha away. Leha is getting in the occasional right hand, the occasional left to the body, but mostly one punch at a time for James. Break, break, don't punch. Chopping right hand there. Gaddy landing the jab over and over is able to land some interesting combinations like that. Left hook to the body, left hook upstairs. A good shot. Right to the body, left hook. Gaddy showing a lot of game. Whole lot of game. Dominating the fight. Okay, good. Let's stay focused now. Okay, and watch those looping right hands. Okay, double jab is working beautiful. All right, let's start putting a little more combinations together. Okay, next round we'll start backing them up some. Okay, but don't load up. Don't look for the one punch. Okay, don't look for the one. Well, use the speed, baby. You know what I mean? If we got to beat them all night, we beat them all night. All right, you put on a nice clinic, but always stay focused. All right, now. Look, we got to. Look, we can't take no chance. We don't know how these people are scoring this fight. You understand? Mm. We had a win. We're not here to lose. Oh, Look, we gotta, we gotta hurt this man now, okay? I want business. you to hurt this man. I want you to get close to him with five, six, seven punches at a time. Okay. Stepping around, don't get up high. Take the chance right here. Ryan Shields telling Leha if he's gonna win the fight, right now he's gotta start attacking. We'll see if Leha has the will to go in and attack against a bigger Arturo Gatti who's been able to hit him freely so far in the fight. He definitely won't win and stand outside of his jab, so he needs to go in and work the body more to try to lessen Gatti's power and get Gatti into those, one of those broadening fights that Gatti likes to fight. That's his only chance because he's not going to win this fight. What a right hand. And this is what
what I mean by if he keeps jabbing, his knockout percentage will go up. Leia had no chance to see the right hand because the jab has been in his face all night. Back to the corner. Back to the corner. You all right? Where you at? Where you at? Come on, step to me. Step to me. Back up, back up. Go. Leha's got his chance here as Gaddy opens up. And Jesse landed a couple of shots, but he takes a huge left hook. Wobbling from the left hook, but still on his feet as he bounces off the ropes and lands a right hand. Great, great. Don't push, don't push. Back up. A long time to go in go. this round, and Leha is dazed. But he lands a left hook. That momentarily backs Gaddy off. Now Gaddy's left hook lands again. And again. He's hoping that Gaddy gets reckless and leaves himself open. Oh, and is. that left hook puts Leha oh. back on the canvas Five, for the second six, time. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and Didn't make it. Another knockout victory for Arturo Gaddy. Off of that beautiful jail. Off of that beautiful jail. He's going to get better and better if he keeps fighting this way. Well, a veteran fighter in Leha just really didn't want to take any more punishment and stayed down after the second knockdown. Roy Jones pointed out the moment at which it had become clear that Leha couldn't hurt Gaddy. From that point forward, Roy, it was just bigger man, bigger punch. Bigger man, bigger punch, and pretty much target practice because he worked the jab so beautifully to set up everything. He knew sooner or later if he kept him out of that range, he was going to catch him with a right hand that he wasn't expecting, and that's what happened to him. I think in terms of blending boxing skill with his ability to attack, this may have been one of the best performances of Gaddy's career. Yeah, there the right hand was right off the jab. Caught Leha out on the end where Leha wasn't ready. Leha was not in range to punch. He's only in range to be hit, and he never saw the rain coming because of the jail. Those are the most deadly shots, the ones you don't see coming. Here, Gotti just kept the pressure on his trade left hooks. Uh, uh, Leha just was really trying to land something big and hope he could get lucky, but he couldn't. That overhand, uh, that left hook right there to the forehead pretty much did the job. Yeah. Power punches landing flush on the top of the head do a lot of damage. Yeah, they do. Especially when the guy probably outweighs you by five or six pounds at Absolutely. least. So Leha, very professionally, stays on the canvas and allows referee Earl Brown to count to 10. He was outgunned tonight against an Arturo Gatti who was boxing beautifully, staying disciplined, and knew the fight was going to come to him. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Earl Brown counts to 10, and this contest is over at one minute, 48 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory, and still WBC super lightweight champion of the world. Arturo Thunder Gotti! <laughs>